fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind the scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty awesome. Yes! Welcome to Athrani, everybody. This is one of my favorite little towns on the Amalfi Coast. We left Positano. It's about a one hour drive to arrive here today. And as you can see behind me, this little town is beautiful. So we're just checking into the new spot here. Patrick and I are staying in this room. There's a legitimate bed, and then there's a baby bed. Since I'm a bigger person, we should test both one night trade up and see how it goes. How about we do rock, paper, a little scissors. rock, paper, scissors right uh, now. All right. Three, three two, two, one. <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> all right, so we're tied up. We're tied up. All right. Three, two, one. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I should have picked. Woo! I can already kind of tell that a lot of the behind the scenes that I do are gonna be of Lee and Patrick sleeping. And you know, I don't feel too bad for them because I know they're tired, but you guys should really give them shit because this is the view that they're. You saw it. You saw it, okay. This is the view guys that they're sleeping through. They just been passed out. This is awesome. So these guys have been shooting a bunch of time lapses and I, they're really all about using professional gear. I mean, they're always doing reviews of this pro gear. This, so they got this thing. Explain this. This Polaroid tripod that we got for $10 in the airport is so good we bought two. And we have used this more than anything. You guys might be confused too because this looks like a point and shoot camera. And the reason is it is a point and shoot camera. Is it, which camera is that Patrick? LX100. Yeah, and that's taking really nice time lapses, isn't it's it? It's a really nice camera. I mean, it's, I don't know what it costs. It might be like $700, but yeah, it's essentially a point and shoot that will build time lapses in the camera itself. So although this room is really nice, uh, it's not the best for what we're doing because we have to spread out and we have so many things charging and the server and the laptops and the, this is what we've done just to manage. So up on this little, like there's this little bitty table. This is where we put our bags. I think we're just gonna leave these bags on the bed because there's really nowhere else to put them. The power cable is running from the wall. We have some that's just gonna sit on the floor there. All of our chargers and stuff are gonna be down there and the server's in there as well. Um, obviously there's no real space to work here. So we may just back up everything on the server with one laptop, but I can't really imagine that we're gonna sit here for hours and try to uh, edit the footage. Since this is the first time we're capturing stars together, I'm gonna explain it from start to finish. The first thing that's very important is before I even worry about the stars, I need to capture the perfect blue hour. Now I'm gonna be blending different exposures together. I'm gonna to blend the blue hour with my multiple stars stacked together. So that means I'm gonna to have to find a base frame of reference to use before I even add the stars in. So this is really nice. The light is starting to fall off and we are entering an early blue hour. So I'm gonna start shooting and I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna shoot all the way through the late blue hour before I start capturing stars. Now for this, since the sunset behind where I'm shooting, the background here, as you guys can see, there really aren't any clouds in the sky. It's really flat. So I can pretty much do this in a single exposure. Now, if you guys don't feel confident shooting in a single exposure to get everything right, feel free to shoot brackets. The most important thing is that the blue hour itself is captured correctly. For this blue hour shot, I'm gonna use the standard settings with this camera, F8, I'm in aperture priority mode, and I have this trigger release cable here. So every few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this release until the blue hour is over. So we are in between shooting right now. We shot a blue hour shot. We're waiting for the stars to come out. And while we wait, President Donald Trump is about to be sworn in and we are watching 
Patrick's. live on Patrick's iPhone. <laughs> Couldn't get more weird than it is right now. Yeah. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. What's interesting about this is the behind the scenes is going to come out a, a long time from now. Like, we're just starting this project. It's going to take us months to film it. Then you have to come to Charleston, and it's going to take more months. And then we have to finish editing it, which takes more months after that. So who knows what's going to happen? Like, we're watching the news and stuff, and people are saying that, you know, he was in cahoots with Russia, and he will be impeached within six months. This, behind the scenes, is going to come out Around at least six months yeah. from now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think Trump's going to be president for four years. Like, I just think it's going to be impossible to impeach him and get him out. And for the first time ever anywhere, the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. Do you think he's making it all four years? Do you think he could go eight? Anything could happen. He could get impeached by the time the behind the scenes come out. He could make it four years. He could make it eight. But if he may either do horrible things or he may do great things, he might solve North Korea. He might fix Israel. He might build the damn wall that he wants. If he does all those things, maybe he'll even communicate with the aliens and they're going to be cool with us. We're suddenly having transport, hyper transport and a hyperloop through Mars with Elon Musk. I have no idea anymore. By this time it was fully dark and we were ready to start filming again. So where I couldn't see anything before, as I start to pan around here, especially towards the edge, I'm starting to notice there are in fact some stars in the sky. Now obviously there's a lot of light coming from that town. In a situation like this, in order to block the light, we could simply just put our hand in front and take the shot. But since I'm gonna leave this camera shooting throughout the night to capture the stars so that we can stack them and create star trails later, I'm not gonna stand here for hours with my hands in front of the frame. So I'm gonna use a different solution. So what I actually have here is just two small rolls of gaffer tape. I've actually taken them and wrapped them around a part of a pen just so I don't have to carry a giant roll of tape with me. And what I'm gonna do is just take a few pieces of tape and just like I would have covered the front of the lens with my hand, I'm just gonna gently add tape to the parts of the image that have the blown out town on the lower left. And what I wanna make sure that I don't do is cover up the sky. Very carefully just wrap this around here. And keep in mind, you guys see this down here is lit. That's because the big video light is on me right now, which honestly is a perfect example of why I'm doing this in the first place. But as soon as that light goes off, you're gonna see that this is just blacked out on the bottom. And you have to make sure, don't accidentally put tape in the sky. It's the sky that we're concerned with keeping. We're just trying to tape off the bottom. So that's one piece. It's probably gonna take two more pieces to get the job done. Now that the tape was successfully applied to the camera without disturbing the camera, let's take a look at the two frames together. Keep in mind that when you're out here at night looking at the back of your camera, it may be hard to tell a difference between the frames. But what I suggest doing is flipping back and forth between them quickly. And I don't know if you guys noticed that, but this frame with the tape, right around the edge of the mountain, there's actually less glow from the lights in the sky. So is it a huge difference, a groundbreaking difference? No, but it's 10 to 20% better. And that makes a huge difference in post-processing because we have more contrast in the sky, less light disturbing the sky from the city, which means we have a greater chance of seeing those stars without that light. <laughs> All right, we've been in Italy now for like three or four days. I have yet to have a decent meal. And Elia just remembered that a restaurant that he ate at five years ago was your favorite restaurant? Yeah, so Naomi and I came here five years ago and remember this little restaurant being exceptional. It could be really good or I could just remember it being really good. Yes. Either way, we're making the Italian food story a big part of the behind the scenes because Lee likes to eat at McDonald's when he's here. So what I'm hoping is that he really likes it. I'm also hoping that I like it, so we'll see. I want a good <laughs> meal tonight so bad. I'll tell you what, if, if all this goes to shit, we're just gonna eat at Olive Garden when we get back to Charleston. Dude, I would love, <laughs> I am not a big fan of Olive Garden. I, if I could get Olive Garden food tonight, I would be like, this is the greatest Italian food I've ever had because I'm so hungry. I haven't had anything other than a sandwich to eat for three days now. Give me all you can eat salad and breadsticks. 
All right, the recommendation that the guy at the hotel had and Eli's favorite restaurant ever here is the same place. So I guess we will test this out and see what we think. It looks fresh. The restaurant uses only fresh top quality. If these are not available, we'll be replaced with frozen food. All right, we've ordered a bunch of food here. We're starting with pizza and uh, it doesn't look, it doesn't look that bad. So I'm excited to give this a try. Easily the best pizza <laughs> ever in Italy. that we've ever eaten in Italy. <laughs> that is the best pizza I've ever had in Italy. And I've had a lot of pizza in Italy. All right, honest review of the food tonight. The, uh, the pizza, I thought I was, that was going to be my least favorite. I really liked it. I got this uh, ravioli with squid sauce and squid. It was a little too hardcore for me, but I don't feel comfortable saying that it wasn't good simply because uh, squid ink and stuff, I'm just not used to it. So maybe it was like the best in the world. Patrick got a more normal dish. Patrick, what did you think of the fish? Compared to the last fish that I had two days ago, it was like a real fish compared to like cheap tilapia. So I think it's fair to say that uh, we had a pretty good dinner experience. Um, I'm, I'm very satisfied going to that restaurant. I look forward to going back to it. But I can't say like it was a mind-blowing, memorable experience and I, I can't wait to travel back to this location either that restaurant. So overall, it was some of the best food that I've had in Italy so far. I hope it only goes up from here. Cheers. We gotta shoot it. Shoot it I'm not straight shooting down. It. I'm not shooting it. You Why shoot it. You shoot that? <laughs> the next morning we woke up and got ready to film the next lesson. It's nine in the morning and I had a uh, time lapse that I started with the D500 to get all of the uh, sun creep to come across. And the battery in the grip was dead but the battery in the camera was still working. So I went to put in another Nikon battery into the grip and the whole thing just stopped working. It shut off. And what I found out was that the D500 only uses the newest version of Nikon's battery. It has an O2 on the back and the battery that I just put in has an O1. So by using the exact same battery, just the wrong version, I completely just killed my time lapse. Come on, Nikon, man. How could you release a camera that does this? So now that I have the time lapse captured, what I'm going to do is I've taken off the neutral density filter. I have it right here. And I'm just going to shoot some 4K video in standard mode. So I'm at F16, like 1 2 50th of a second, the lowest ISO I can go. And now I'm just shooting like a minute or two of video. And what I want to do is the time lapse always creates really choppy water. Even if you have a 5, 10, 15 second exposure, the water down here, it's just going to go back and forth like, you know, it's some kind of tidal wave or something. So I want the water to be really smooth. So my thought is now that I've got the time lapse of the city with all the cars blurred and the people moving in kind of a more uh, artistic fashion, I'm just going to paint in the water here in my time lapse and premiere. This is uh, the old center of town. It's really small and cool. Let's kind of pan here to the left and the right. It's old clock tower. And you can see that in the summertime, this is full of people. But right now we have it all to ourselves. And this town goes all the way back up in the mountain and all the way up there. We're actually gonna climb to that church uh, and get the view all the way down. The guys are gonna hate it though, because it's like thousands of stairs. I'm trying to pack as light as I can. I've still got a backpack that's pretty full of stuff. Patrick's only bringing one camera and one tripod. The problem with this is that you come up here and you're faced with like all of these different directions to go. So while you see the tutorial, we clearly walk the right way. In real life, we are making wrong decision after wrong decision. 
Here we are at the top. It's a beautiful little church and a great lookout point. It was actually a really nice walk. There were a lot of stairs. We walked through these little areas where people live, hanging in their laundry, different things like that. It was really nice and quite different than Positano. Main difference was not nearly as many stairs and not as steep. We actually had nice areas where it flattened out and gave us a break for a little while. So being up here, it's nothing like being down at sea level. In fact, it looks like it could be almost a completely different town. Still worth coming up here to check out. What I'd say is this could be a good example of an alternative shot for this city too. If we get the main shot, the hero shot down there, close to the water, we could come up here and maybe get an additional shot as well. Let me go ahead and take a quick reference photo so we can take a look. First thing you're gonna notice, horrible shadows. So you can't use a shot like this because of that shadow crawl. I'm also shooting with my wide angle lens. So this is equivalent in 35 millimeter format at exactly 35. So if I was going to shoot this, I'd want to zoom in. I probably want to include a little bit of the horizon line and the water to give it that sense of scale and purpose so that you can see the mountain and where the water begins. I don't think it would look good if you zoomed all the way into the town, then it would be considered a telephoto or a detail shot. But if you were going to shoot this, I'd probably recommend a sunrise. You'd want to find the time when either the town is completely illuminated without any shadow disturbance at all, or wait till an early blue hour in the morning or a late blue hour at night. I think that you could use more of the city because it's likely a lot of it will actually light up at night and cause a very interesting composition. Did you ever think you get to the point where you're gonna go out and grab lunch and you're like, hey, I might as well just take the drone just in case? I I remember in the last tutorial when we had like the heavy case with the with the Phantom 3, and at that time I still thought, this is incredibly convenient. And then now we're like going to get pizza. And I'm like, yeah, I might as well bring it, I'll just carry it in my hand. I don't wanna even bring a backpack, I'll just carry it in my hand. So it's our last night here in Atrani. We've hiked up and down this mountain and we are now finally settling into uh, the second shot. I think it's gonna be the same shot, but we just had to film uh, the sequences out of order. So right now I am doing a little time lapse here in a location that's really cool. And Lee, of course, is flying the drone. I think Lee and Eli are testing the drones side by side. I'm not quite sure what they're doing, but we have the Phantom 4 Pro and the new Mavic. Patrick was right. We wanted to compare the Mavic to the Phantom 4 Pro when it came to ISO performance. Of course, the Phantom was a little bit better, but I was really impressed with the way the Mavic held its own. And I'm not one to shoot that much aerial footage at night anyway. That night we met up with a local friend, Marco, and I'm happy to say that we finally had an excellent Italian meal. I have to say, I really like this. This is very, very good. Very tasty. That's very good. Afterwards, we went out for a local drink. What is this? <laughs> Yikes! That's like motor oil. Yeah, that's got a that's got a bite to it. And then Patrick thought he got smart by secretly pouring his drink out in the trash. First one done. Now wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. No. Dude, oh, there is nothing in no, there. Look at this trash. There's not even an opening. What in. is this? What is that brown? Where? What is that, Aliyah? That's rust. Are you no, kidding in me? In there, on the bag. What is that? Oh, that's like vomit. Come <laughs> on. They're trying to say I didn't drink this. I totally drank it. They're lying. This is garbage. I went over here to look at the liquors that they had. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we find what we had been looking for for days. This is bound to be the most controversial part of this whole behind the scenes series. I have to say, there are more people in this McDonald's than any restaurant we have been to in all of Italy. 
by a landslide. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com store.